when we do programs, when I was, you know, I spent 22 years in India working almost if totally with the private sector. And we, did, we would do a, a seminars with them on leadership development and what does it mean to, to uh, <clears throat> what does it mean to structurally allow what I just talked about to happen. And you can do that and that's another story. But I feel that organizations need to be a place in which that kind of authentic action can be manifest. And you have people who operate out of that self-understanding who allow that to happen. So one of the exercises we used to do with these young, and they were all young men, um, was to do them, have them do a, a, a charting of their life, a life journey. And we would reflect. And I had an exercise. And I had a section there that was, was for people. And I had a series of questions. Name you know, three teachers that had a big effect on you. What, name three authors that had three a big effect on you. They, three, et cetera, et cetera. Movies. That are, you know, anyhow. So, and you just write those down when in your life you had it. And we go through an exercise where that gets processed. Where people begin to discover in various chunks of their life, their life was about something. And therefore, there was a significance that was going on. They had a purpose. They also had a set of values that were guiding their actions in that period of time. And that's what gives that, that period it has an energy to it. <clears throat> it has a, it when you're engaged in something significant that has a purpose and you say, you know, during this period I'm getting an education was what I was about. This is what I was about raising a family. This I was about that. You know, it doesn't matter what you title it. It's just clear that you had a focus in your life. You had a purpose to everything. And the journey is how do you move through those sets of purposes in such a way that the whole thing has a story rather than just a you know, a bouncing along, <laughs> bumping into this and then all of a sudden bumping into that and when you get all, you know, the final bump bumps you into the funeral pyre or whatever it is, you know. So anyhow, what, the, what the, in the exercise, we sit in a circle at the, when we're processing it and I get people to talk about people in their lives because it's the encounter with people that fundamentally is where the life exchange takes place. You can have life exchange by encountering with nature. You know, people have that all the time. They have an encounter with the ultimate reality through a dialogue with that. But mostly, you encounter it by your encounter with another human being. And so I get people to tell stories about teach, who did you write down? And why? And what difference did that person make in your life? I tell you, after three or four of those stories, you could cut the awe in the room. Each one was a deep revelation of how they were different because that person believed in them or challenged them or what have you, you know, just that. And, and that's what I want. So I, I want them to see that Life is about encounter. Life is about when you meet another person, there's an exchange or there's no exchange. <laughs> and the, the tragedy is that if we think about our lives, there's only a few people that we remember encountering. And then there's tens of thousands that somehow you bump like a billiard ball and you have no idea that anything got exchanged whatsoever. And so we, we talk about that. <clears throat> and I end the, I end the session in, with two, two things. Two, one question and then a final statement. Two questions. Uh, I said, I asked, I said, because I was in India, I said, does anybody know I've asked this of thousands of people. Does anybody know the name of the conduct ticket collector who threw Gandhi off the train? I'm looking for that guy. The name of the guy. Does anybody know who that was? Of course, nobody knows. 
I said, wouldn't you like to thank that son of a bitch? Wouldn't you like to go and say thank you for being a son of a bitch? Because had you not been that son of a bitch and tossed that man off the train, history would never be the same. And then I say, you know, and who have been the son of a bitches in your life? That because of what they did or said, your life is different, dramatically different. And wouldn't you like to thank them, though you certainly didn't thank them at the moment. 